Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. So today I wanted to do another anticipated releases of the year. So I will be talking about books coming out from August until December 2019. Um, and I enjoy doing these videos because it gives me sort of an overview of some of the books that I'm looking forward to and want to keep to get my hands on. Even if I don't actually get to them in the same year, there are still titles that I sort of have um, on, on the top of my list. So first I wanted to mention two books that I have actually already read and they are classics um, and specifically Swedish classics. So uh, I wanted to bring your attention to, two, to both of these. One of them is actually already out which is Dr. Glass by Elmer Sarbay and it is coming out or has uh, already come out in the vintage uh, Red Spine edition um, with an introduction by Margaret Ash. Would. This book is the basically the story of a doctor who is contemplating his responsibilities as a doctor. He sort of gets entangled into this woman's life and her marriage um, that isn't very happy and he is contemplating a lot of things surrounding himself and his um, relationship with this woman and his job as a doctor. Um, it is one of my favorite Swedish classics and Swedish books in general. And another book similarly to that is Kalokin by Karin Boye, which is coming out in the sort of the regular Penguin Classics line. It's coming out the 28th of uh, November. Kalokin has actually been one of those uh, books that has not been very easily uh, accessible in, in, in the English translation for a while, I think. Um, but it is one of my favorites. It is a dystopian novel looking at the idea of what if your mind isn't even safe anymore. There's a scientist at the center of this novel that is uh, trying to produce a truth serum uh, and basically that will allow the surveillance state to even look into your mind as well. You will not even be able to think freely. Uh, so this book is sort of looking at that and the implications of that and the scientist um, who's behind this serum trying to grapple with that. Um, it is a fantastic book and I am so excited to see it being uh, in print and in this um, very uh, sort of uh, renowned classic edition. So I wanted to bring your attention to both of those two. For new releases that I haven't read, the first one I want to talk about is called I'm Telling the Truth But I'm Lying, um, which is um, published by Harper Perennial and it's coming out on the 20th of August. So this is an essay collection by Bathy Ickby which is centering around mental illness. Bassi Ikbi explores her life as a Nigerian-American immigrant, a black woman, a slam poet, a mother, a daughter, and an artist through the lens of her mental health and diagnoses of bipolar 2 and anxiety. So it seems like it's sort of crossing over between memoir and essay uh, through this exploration of mental health and a lot of other things obviously. Um, but I was really interested in this because of reading the collective schizophrenia earlier in the year. I've been looking both for more books on mental health and on um, of the essay form. So this obviously covers both of those things. The next one I have is Dancing with Bees, A Journey Back to Nature by Birgit Strawbridge Howard and this is published by Chelsea Green Publishing on again the 20th of August and this one is a book about the author um, sort of just rediscovering nature through bees. Uh, obviously something that I am interested in since I read the uh, great um, the Honeybee Heart has five openings. I've been wanting to read more books on bees. This book is obviously sort of chronicling two things that I'm interested in, both the bee aspect of it and also just sort of uh, generally anything that really draws you into nature, I think, is something that I'm interested in reading about and people rediscovering um, the nature around them. The next one I have is called This Golden Fleece, A Journey Through Br Britain's Knitted History by Esther Rutter and this is published by Granta. Over the course of a year, Esther Rutter, who grew up on a sheep farm in Suffolk, and learn to spin, weave and knit as a child, travels the length of the British Isles to tell the story of wool's long history here. So it's both looking at knitting and of wool and the history of that. I am a knitter myself and I have been knitting basically every day for at least the last 
three, three or four years um, and so I have been looking for books on knitting history for a long time and this one seems to cover that and particularly obviously with a British uh, perspective and Granta is always publishing fantastic things. On a similar topic uh, we have a book coming out in October called Vanishing Fleece Adventures in American Wool by Clara Parks which is published on uh, October 15 by Abrams Books. So it says a fast-paced account of the year Clara Parks spent transforming a 670 six pound bale of fleece into saleable yarn and the people and vanishing industri industry she discovered along the way. So it seems to be looking more closely on the producement of yarn and the um, the market for that. Um, but with yarn you're um, inevitably going to be looking into the crafts around it. The next one I have is called Footnotes, a journey around Britain in the company of great writers by Peter Fien. Uh, this one is uh, published by One World on the 5th of September. And this is uh, a na nature writing book about the, um, I think, the British landscapes and looking at it through a historical lens, uh, sort of what's been there before and what is there now. And this author has published uh, a previous book called Oak and Ash and Thorn that I'm also interested in. Um, but the reason that I uh, even heard about this book was actually through a bookstagram. Uh, someone uh, talked about this book or recommended it um, and it sounded really interesting so I immediately added it to my list. The next one I have is probably a very hyped one. Uh, out of these books it's probably the one that most people be will be um, either familiar with or uh, interested in. It is A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier published by the Borough Press um, and it is published again on the 5th of September. Uh, it is set in the 30s and follows someone who embroiders, I think, for a living. So I don't really know a lot about this book other than it's about uh, it's about embroidery and it's by Chevalier, but those two things uh, sold me because I uh, read my first Chevalier book in the spring, uh, which was Remarkable Creatures and I loved it and I am really interested in embroidery in general. I'm really interested in the, the old crafts like embroidery and knitting and sewing. The next one is uh, more of a niche one I think. It's called Cabin Porn Inside, uh, edited by Zach Klein and it is published by Voracious on the uh, 1st of October. So Cabin Porn uh, has a previous book. It is basically a collection of photographs and stories from people who have cabins all around the world. Um, some of them uh, are sort of very modern in the, uh, the appearance, some of them use um, like Na natural places to its um, fullest capacity. I loved cabin porn so I'm really looking forward to seeing the insides of these homes because it's basically um, being able to dream away to uh, this isolated place. You, most of these um, cabins are obviously quite isolated uh, in location. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing the insides of these homes and getting maybe some inspiration. Then we have The Great Pretender um, by Susanna Cahalan, Cahal um, published by Get Grand Central Publishing. Uh, and this is one this one is coming out the 5th of November propulsive narrative history investigating the 50 year old mystery behind a dramatic experiment that changed the course of modern medicine um, I I won't be able to describe all of the the back background of this, but I will link the uh, description on the publisher's website. I read a sample of this through uh, like a bus book um, bus books catalog and it was amazing and I wanted to read read on immediately so I added it to my list. This book feels like it's slightly outside of my usual um, reading but the sample was just so good. The next one I have is The Dream in the Dream House uh, by Carmen Maria Machado, um, a memoir and it is published by Grey Wolf Press on the uh, 5th of 
November. So this is a memoir of the author who wrote the short story collection Her Body and Other Parties. Um, I have not read that short story collection but, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. From what I've heard about her short story collection it seems like it's sort of um, the themes that she's interested in in her fiction writing is a similar themes that she's exploring in her memoir. And uh, from everything that I've heard of the short story collection, it makes me think I will like her nonfiction. The next one I have is My Penguin Year, Living with the Emperors by Lindsay McCree. And this one is published by William Merrow on the 12th of November. Uh, so this is a book about emperor penguins. And I mean, I don't think I need to say anything more really because I am trying to collect basically natural history books on every animal and I don't, to my knowledge, know of any very closely looking at penguins but I, I could definitely be wrong about that. I know that there's a lot of books about penguins but not specifically about penguins. An unprecedentedly intimate portrait of an emperor penguin colony in Antarctica by a BAFTA award-winning BBC director of photography who observed these extraordinary birds for a year. Um, so yeah, I mean I don't think I need to say anything more about that really so I will probably be pre-ordering this one actually because it feels like it's the perfect book to read in the middle of winter. The last one I have to talk about is maybe even the one that I'm most excited for. At least it's very high on the list. It's called The Ship of Dreams, The Sinking of the Titanic and the End of the Edwardian Era by Gareth Russell. Published by um, Atria Books on uh, in November. I, I can't get the date now. Uh, so I am really really fascinated by the Titanic and all of the things around it. I read a book about it, uh, A Night to Remember I think it's called, a uh, history of the, what happened on the Titanic and who survived and who didn't, what went wrong and why and all of those things. And I'm, I'm really fascinated around um, all of those details but I am also really into Edwardian, the Edwardian era and uh, especially the, the, the transition from uh, the Edwardian to uh, more of the modern era. Um, a big transition and um, especially now re-watching Downton Abbey is something that's on my mind. Um, how much the world changed uh, after the Titanic and going forward and obviously if you're familiar with Downton Abbey it starts with uh, the Titanic sinking. Uh, so I am very very excited to read this one and I think it's going to be right up my alley. So those are all of the books that I wanted to talk about uh, that are coming out in these the next few months that I'm really excited for. Uh, let me know if you're also interested in reading any of these or if you've read maybe uh, previous works by these authors and enjoyed them or not. Um, and also let me know if you have any specific books that you're really anticipating uh, for the, the rest of 2019. I would love to know. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will talk to you soon.